Hace unos días me di a la tarea de platicar con dos personas expertas en encontrar glitches, trucos y bugs en los videojuegos, tanto de Halo como de muchos otros más. Entonces les hice las preguntas que tú hiciste en la pestaña de comunidad y estas fueron sus respuestas. Espero te gusten. Ok, we're gonna start. Uh, who are you and what do you do in the community? All right, so my name's Bernd. I've been involved in speedrunning for only a couple of years now. Uh, it's mainly mainly speedrunning CE, but also maintaining a lot of the tools, like creating and maintaining a lot of tools for all the Halo games, uh, like the order splitters and the checkpoint trainers. I have a few IL rookies for CE, and I found a lot of tricks in the game as well. I am G Pro. Well, I am I am G Pro, G Pro, whatever. And I mean, most of what I do, at least in the Halo community specifically, is uh, I usually am just kind of around talking to people. And when I find something interesting, some some strat development or something like that, I'm just like, oh, hey, cool. I want in on that. So how did you start or what inspired you to do what you do? So Garish Goblin. Uh, I I hadn't even like seen any speedruns really up until I started watching Garish Goblin back in like 2017 on Twitch, and I was like, "Holy shit, this is cool!" And obviously, Halo was just always one of my favorite childhood games. It was really cool to see it get broken apart like the way it already was even back then. It's like, yeah, I saw some of the tricks. And I was like, "Hey, I wonder how that works." I sort of dived in. <laughs> Here's the thing: is that I started out as a ridiculous fanboy of glitching and tricking from halo <laughs> i was i was like oh no 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 halo 3 tricks holy crap hold extra trick <sighs> and like i just kind of started out um you know liking that stuff that's kind of what motivated me to start trying the stuff and doing the stuff um sorry about the dogs um that's what got me into it at least you know, seeing that and then watching all the Halo tricking stuff. And um, I just, I always thought it was really cool. Okay, you for ready for the next one? Sure. This, this can have like multiple answers depending on, okay? So okay. how much time does it take you to route or find a glitch? That is a really difficult question to answer since, you know, it's it's dependent specifically on what the level is, what the game is. Like, say, for example, uh, I can go back to 2012, 2013 and Sonic Heroes when Team, Cha Team Chaotix's ILs were pretty different from what they are now. A lot of the times I was just like, hmm, I wonder if this is better. And then, you know, you would test things and practice things. Sometimes it would take you a couple minutes for you to figure something out. Sometimes it could take you a couple hours, sometimes a couple days. And then, you know, getting some kind of inspiration. That was something that I always did with a lot of the games. So, like, it could take hours, days, weeks, depending on that for, like, routing and stuff. So... You, it's not really a set in stone thing. It's something that happens over the course of multiple different thoughts and processes and all that other kind of stuff. You just sometimes just get hit with inspiration. For basic routing, though, I would say maybe a couple of days or something, depending on the familiarity you have with the game. That's with routing. With glitches, it's hard to say. Uh, for example, uh, the whole thing with Banshee through the door, I just was like, well, I thought Skirty did it. And then I kept seeing Garish trying to do Fast Ghost and two betrayals on Legendary, and he kept dying. So it's just like, you know what? I'm just going to try it. And I just ran that damn Banshee in the door until it happened. It took me 30 minutes. I wasn't really thinking about it. I was just doing it. <laughs> it really depends, but for... Like back when I started for like the Banshee teleports, as an example, it took me quite a lot of hours just to like grinding at punching Banshees different ways until I could like find a setup that works. I'd say quite quite a lot of hours, but it's kind of fun because you'd like you never know when you're going to be on the cusp of the next big thing, right? Like, like you you can enjoy that that time. Like it's not something yeah, exactly. like yo, I'm tired of this. You just enjoy all those those, those hours. Exactly. You gotta have the right mindset, I guess. How much time do you practice uh, a glitch or something? Uh, for like glitches and stuff. I mean, 
specifically practice, like, I guess in terms of practice, just actually doing it right. It's not like the intent to practice it, just like performing it over and over again. Because, like, if it's just performing it over and over again, a lot, because <laughs> I enjoy doing it. Uh, I probably spent like half my time practicing as compared to actually doing runs. It really depends. If I'm like just starting to learn like a level or full game, then I spend like 90% of the time practicing. And uh, I know for a lot of the individual levels that I did, when I started learning them, I probably spent like 100, 200 hours before I started getting like up to sort of recce like uh, skill, you know. Yeah, a lot, quite a lot, but I'm also the kind of person that finds practice very fun. Now here comes the, the real question, okay? All right. Okay. How do you find a trick? Is it an accident? Do you use some software, some hacks, some code? Added? Like, do you inspect the code of the game somehow? How do you actually find a trick or a glitch? It's a combination of all, of all of them, honestly. So sometimes, sort of on accident, someone like randomly stumbles into something and people just immediately jump on it like, oh, maybe there's a way we can use that. Other times it's reading through the script of the game to figure out, you know, what are the orders that we have to hit the triggers and like, what can we actually skip? And in other places we can create tools, especially on PC to sort of automate glitch hunting, I suppose is one way to say it, uh, to find like setups that like work better than sort of what inputs work best and that kind of thing. Well, one, one good example for, um, for Halo CE is there's some spots in some of the geometry on some of the levels where there's holes in the collision that you can just walk straight through. It looks totally normal, but you can just walk straight through it. They're very rare, but we've actually got tools that can automatically sort of scan through an entire level and tell you where the holes are. Yeah, and that wasn't me. I should, uh, that was Scales that made that tool. Okay, really, yeah, like really good of him. You and the Scales have done a lot of like uh, tools and different mm -hmm. softwares that actually like help a lot. Yeah, exactly. Wacky as well. Oh, yeah, wacky. The three amigos. <laughs> yeah, the three amigos. Well, the answer to the question is yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all of it. A, a glitch can happen by accident. A lot of things are found by accident. If, if anybody is familiar with Dark Souls, Dist uh, was running... I think Dark Souls, one of the Dark Souls games during a marathon, and accidentally found a trick that saved like 30 minutes on the run or something like that. That is an example of an accident. Tuval uh, would would spend like a whole bunch of time using using like a levitate code or moon jump code in Spyro to look for weaknesses in geometry to find skips. And he found a thing called uh, Coveless in Spyro 1. So like it can either be on accident, or by accident, rather. It could be you would something that you think could be a thing, and you just keep trying things. Like, um, you know, I'm just like, oh, I wonder what happens if I do this. If I do this. I do this over the course of, like, I don't know, maybe a week or two until it works. And then you can have somebody like Burnt, who uses his ginormous IQ, which I don't even know how he fits his damn brain in his head. <laughs> just thinking about like all these different like ways of like using bumps in Halo 1 and finding all this crazy stuff it's like there's so there's many different ways that you can find a trick or a glitch okay so the final question is what tricks or glitches have you found and how did you find them there's a lot of a lot of stuff that i have found but um one of the things that I really, that I like to pride myself in is one of my first glitches that I found way back when I was 11. Now, in Spyro Hero's Tale, you have this thing where uh, there's like a shop pad that you just press Y on to go and buy stuff in the midst of like the, of the game. And it pauses everything. And now, um, I was searching on YouTube and I found this thing called Zombie in Spyro 1. And now me with my like young brain, I was like, what if I do this in Spyro a Hero's Tale? And it fucking worked. Um, and then, of course, there's the thing in Halo specific. One of the things that I found was getting the Banshee through the door. I was just kind of like by ramming it in there. Or 
Say like in 343 Guilty Spark when you're doing reveal skip, the crouch and then the uncrouch to go over to the ledge, or say especially especially light bump, where I kind of just like was doing a bunch of random visual cues to try to like say, oh well, you could do this, it's very easy to replicate. Well, the, the, I think of a lot of the tricks, like it's all sort of building on a like history and sort of like collaboration. So I wouldn't say like I'm entirely responsible for anything, but one of the big ones I'd say I was mostly responsible for was the Banshee teleports on Assault in the Control Room in CE. All right, so back in the day when I started watching Garish, um, they'd started implementing a very basic version of a Banshee teleport into the run on that level. No one really understood why it worked, and occasionally some people would just get really long teleports when they did that for no reason. And you know, I saw that I was like, well, there's got to be a consistent sort of fundamental to this that like maybe if we aim at like specific spots that the banshee falls on you a specific way then we can like control how far it sends you it took quite a few months and there was a lot of sort of evolutionary steps in between as we figured out like and it was many hours of punching banshees i tell you <laughs> that we i did find the sort of you know where do you aim on the banshee to uh, go the, the exact distance that you need to go to save the most time so on the library, there's a trick called Light Bump, which replaces what uh, used to be a Flood Bump. Like, that was a really, like, a team effort trick. I think it was Jumpyard who pointed it out that you could glitch inside the door, and then G-Pro figured out you could, uh, from inside the door, you could teleport above the door. But then uh, I think I found, using a script I developed, I figured out, like, if you aim at this precise pixel, you can get teleported quite a distance and skip the whole room. And that, that was found using a script that I made. That one, you know, if I tried to do that by hand, that would have taken a lot longer. I had a big part in Bull, I guess. I mean, that trick had been, like, theorized for years. And on the Pillar of Waldem on Easy, there's, a like, a trick to skip part of the tutorial called Sam Skip, which I mostly was responsible for. So the, uh, the teleport that we do at the start of the mall, we call, I, I call it Cafe Telly. Um, that was one that I uh, did as well, found a lineup for using a script. Bueno, uh, llegamos al final. Quiero agradecer enormemente a Born y a Gipro por tomarse el tiempo para poder hacer estas entrevistas. Créeme, este, son muy buenas personas. Obviamente, pues, Gipro medio habla español y Born para nada. Entonces, pues sí, tuve, tuve que tomar un buen tiempo para hacer la traducción de todo. Espero te haya gustado. Te habrás dado cuenta que las entrevistas no son la misma, o sea tuve una llamada con Gipro y otra con Burnt. Coordinar los horarios con personas de diferentes países no es tan sencillo, y más cuando todos tenemos cosas que hacer, pero espero te haya gustado. Si quieres escuchar las entrevistas sin editar, que cada una dura como 30 minutos, uh, déjame un comentario. Y si estás en algún futuro y quieres escucharlas, probablemente, si varios comentaron, estos links de descarga están en la descripción. No van a estar en YouTube, simplemente los voy a subir a Google Drive o a Mega o a, uh, no sé, uh, ¿cuál medio Fire, tal vez? Así que, simplemente... Deja tu comentario, dale like y nos veremos después. Gracias por ver.